hello everyone uh, this is um, uh, coalescent application it is based on uh, the framework uh, coalescent and the version is uh, 1.3 uh, what we are trying to do here is um, uh, create uh, the jobs for various uh, computations in population genetics and uh, the users should be able to run these jobs uh, easily and uh, view the output, uh, the graphical output, and uh, trace the algorithms while it's running, things like that. Uh, it is um, based on the NetBeans uh, platform application. You can see it here. And uh, so it helps in building this plugin based architecture. Uh, it has uh, all the um, built-in facilities like uh, uh, Windows management and things like that and uh, that helps in <coughs> building uh, large applications so the purpose the, the aim of this application is uh, uh, it should be able to accommodate a large number of computations and uh, the user should be able to um, run the jobs easily various models and uh, and uh, it should uh, hopefully you know the others should be able to also uh, contribute jobs so this window is jobs window and uh, these jobs are categorized with by the, by the categories and uh, different modules can add jobs to all these um, categories existing categories or uh, create new categories of jobs this is properties window the input for the job and this is where the output will be displayed and this is the editor area where you can uh, display the graphical outputs graphs and and other displays you can run a job by selecting one job and then hit, hitting this button you can also run multiple jobs by control selecting multiple jobs and then hitting this button you can edit one job by selecting it and editing its properties here you can also edit multiple jobs simultaneously by control selecting uh, multiple jobs and uh, editing them here so you see that you know, if um, some of these values are different you won't be able to edit them while um, the properties that are same you'd be able to edit those properties so let's run uh, some examples uh, here. Um, here is a job check phylogeny. Um, we know that infinite sites data um, has a perfect phylogeny, and um, so this job basically checks um, whether the data has phylogeny or not. So you can choose data from here. So this application comes with some sample uh, data files. Uh, that you can choose uh, let's uh, choose um, this data uh, which appeared in uh, Griffith's Tavare 94 paper uh, let's choose that and we have um, Gusfield's algorithm for checking it or uh, four gametes algorithm for checking uh, phylogeny so let's run so you see that it um, says uh, phylogeny check true and this is the data set this is the output so it has phylogeny um, if you run it again you see that um, output for the same job appear in the in the same window okay so you can uh, you can select different data sets and or uh, let's say choose a different algorithm and uh, run this job so both algorithms uh, say that in the phylo it has phylogeny. Here is another job that visualizes uh, the gene tree corresponding to infinite sides data. Uh, here you can see, okay, so let's choose uh, this data set and visualize uh, the gene tree. So here you see the so here you can zoom and pan 
uh, the entire tree uh, you can pick or transform the tree um, so you can also save the figure so, so I want to save it as a JPEG so here you see that you know it, it, it has saved uh, the figure here you can also pick transform the entire figure when you double click these are these facilities are uh, available uh, from the NetBeans platform um, you see all this uh, window management okay here uh, here is another category a recursion uh, computing uh, you know, in, in population genetics all the computations basically depend upon uh, recursions and we have the framework has a generic algorithm for uh, recursion uh, over the sample configuration and um, while recursing you can you know compute several things uh, for example uh, you can compute the probability or you can compute how many uh, configurations ancestral configurations you have you can also count uh, the number of genealogies um, you can build all these configurations you know, exactly see what those configurations are or you can build also the uh, genealogies so all these computations uh, can be dynamically uh, chosen uh, when uh, can can be an input uh, to the algorithm so this is infinite alleles model uh, you can um, put the value of theta the mutation parameter and an is basically um, uh, basically um, the frequency spectrum data and this is a format for uh, giving that data so let's run this model and see uh, the output so here you see the description of the job what is the description of the job that theta used and uh, a format for uh, the input data set this is a this is a format for input, uh, for the input data set uh, this shows what computation was run it computes the exact probability and uh, this is this is the probability it computed um, suppose I want to also count the configs and uh, count the genealogies let's say I run again so you see the same input and here the different number of uh, computations that got attached uh, exact probability of course the same as, as before and uh, total number of ancestral configurations 8 number of genealogies 4 okay so we can even actually choose all and uh, so here you see that um, all possible uh, ancestral configurations eight configurations and these are the genealogies okay the framework uh, the framework uh, describes um, the exact format of all this and, uh, um, and uh, there is a console application that uses the properties as uh, as the input and uh, runs these jobs and there's a user guide for it and it, it has a separate tutorial that explains all this input and output um, what we have here is also an, another thing that is not available from the conf console application is uh, um, validation when you are entering data. So um, let's say you put something something wrong here in the value of theta and it shows that you, know, you have um, an input error. And if you try to save that, it, 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 it won't save, it won't let you save. So you can change this value. If it's a valid value, it will take it. Uh, say, say for this one, this has a regular expression uh, pattern checking. It must be in a, in a certain format, this pattern. And if, if you make a mistake, it will show you that the input is not right. And you won't be able to uh, save that uh, wrong input. So this greatly um, helps in uh, entering the right input. And uh, so you don't have you know, input errors like that. Okay, that covers uh, infinite uh, alleles model, and uh, what we have for infinite sites model is um, uh, you, can, you can do all the same computations. Uh, let's uh, 
let's compute three and uh, uh, let's use a small data set like this one small data set and uh, let's run this so you see that uh, for different jobs uh, and uh, outputs appear in different tabs and for the inference adds data these are these are the uh, these are the computations what we have another thing that is interesting here is um, um, here we have another thing which is profiling the recursion cache so it has a recursion of course you know uh, the recursion graph has um, a partition in terms of the cut sets and um, the recursion algorithm is basically uh, saving um, uh, the uh, the configurations while it's while it's while it's recursing over the entire graph uh, so you can have different algorithms so for example uh, forward algorithm is there and uh, right now it uses the backward algorithm um, you can you can visualize the cache uh, no, the recursion cache dynamically while the while the algorithm is running this uh, actually showcases the flexibility of the framework um, what you can do with the framework for example um, let's um, let's let's change the data set to something that is uh, um, that is a little big um, so this is a big data set that takes some time to uh, compute and uh, we want to see how the how the cache recursion cache is changing over time which might help in improving the algorithm okay. so let's say um, let's say um, let's run this and we can we can even actually you know do this dynamically during while it's running so let's uh, so you see that it's running and also um, it gives you an input of how many what, what the total cache size is you see like 6000 you know cache so suppose dynamically i want to uh, i want to check the distribution the cache distribution so you can see that um, it's, it's updating this uh, updating this graph uh, if you choose to stop listening to this uh, you can you can do that as well it would stop or you can again uh, reattach and it will it will update so there is also a facility for uh, stopping uh, long-running jobs say I want to I want to cancel that job. You can do that as well. So the so the underlying underlying framework um, has the has the facility to stop uh, long running jobs. That helps you uh, in really you know running uh, uh, different kinds of dataset because some dataset might be you know uh, might be too large to uh, run the recursion exactly. Um, that's about it in terms of uh, the available um, computations right now but um, uh, it has it has facilities uh, to accommodate a large number of uh, jobs for example uh, there's one other thing that is interesting is these jobs are all um, uh, all are, all are you know, based on plugin like manner so you can add jobs you can install uninstall uh, you can activate or deactivate jobs um, so so you can focus on the jobs currently you are busy exploring and uh, install jobs on demand so here you see the and uh, the, the structure also notifies you of uh, what um, plugins are available or not and uh, you can basically um, register the update centers here and uh, it will notify you of updates automatically so you see the, these are the jobs that are currently registered now so you can um, select a job deactivate it and um, yeah, you don't you don't show here. And then again, you can activate it later. This describes uh, what what each plugin is doing. So you can you know, check this out before installing. Um, that's about it. Um, thanks for uh, watching.